Hello everyone, welcome back to the Real Starfinder. Today we are going to be putting the factions into a tier list based on how they play the Swarm playstyle. So let's go ahead and start off about talking about what Swarm playstyle is. Swarm playstyle is basically using uh, large volumes of dice and low initiative ships to overpower your opponent. It is very much just throw as much red dice as you can and basically block so that way your opponent loses their action and then hit them when they're have when they're tokenless. It's a very um, very preemptive, very kind of control based by basically using blocks or just overpowering until they have no resources left and then you basically push in all your damage. It's very good against large base ships. Large base ships lose incredibly to swarms, especially against ghosts, especially against uh, decimators. Swarms will just eat those two ships up completely, especially against one agility dice ships they're very good against. Um, they're very good against aces if you block them. Uh, they're basically kind of like a toolbox sort of thing. Not only do they rush your opponent with dice, but you can control your opponent by blocking them and stuff, and your opponent really has to um, go in, hit them, and then either if they try to choose to fight, they're probably going to lose because you're going to bump them, or you get around them and then you try to re-engage them. So there's a lot of different ways to fight against Swarms, but Swarms is all about overpowering your opponent and throwing as much dice as possible at them. So let's talk about the factions going on with the... Bleh. I can't speak words. Hello everyone, welcome back to Real Starfighter. Today we are going to be talking about putting the factions into a tier list based on how they play the Swarm playstyle. So Swarm playstyle is a playstyle that utilizes large number of ships and throwing a large amount of dice in hopes of overpowering your opponent, stripping away resources, and taking them out that way. Um, usually your opponent has to fly completely different against Swarms as opposed to they do against other lists. Because if they go right into the swarm, they're going to get blown to smithereens. I don't care what swarm you play of any tier level. That's just what happens. That's what you're. That's what you want as a swarm player is your opponent to just go in there, you know, guns blazing, and then you just obliterate them. Um, not only that, but you can control them by bumping into their uh, their ace and then putting up kill boxes and making kill zones to take out the ace. So. I would say that swarms are kind of anti-meta, they're very safe, they're just very expensive because you're buying multiple copies of the same ship, they're very expensive to make, but they are always reliable. I think that swarms are largely reliable when I was playing on TTS throughout um, the past year. Uh, I just saw that a lot of people were flying swarms were really going back to them because like they were safe, they were easy to fly, it's just all about overpowering your opponent. So let's go ahead and start putting these guys in the tiers. So for the first order, I'm going to say they're tier 2. Tier 2 being because they have really good ships to swarm with great firepower. However, their ships are very expensive. Even the lower initiative ships are pretty expensive. Um, when, you look at tier, when you look at trying to swarm something, you're looking for cheap ships that are very reliable. Now they have the reliability down pat, but they're nowhere near cheap enough to really get a big enough swarm. I think the strongest swarm they have is TIE SFs being able to shoot forward and back. I think that's good, I think that's powerful. Um, but again, I just don't think they are um, super good at swarming in terms of getting mass number of ships that are good at pushing on a bunch of firepower. They have a good quality, but not, necess not necessarily good quantity. And you're looking for quantity when you're looking at swarms. Next up we have the Galactic Republic. And for the Republic, I actually kind of put them in tier one reason why I say that is because they're very good, at least the clone side. So I talked a lot about the um, the Jedis in the Ace video. The clone side is much more powerful in my opinion. Now, I, I like the clones better than the Jedi in the Republic faction because they have the whole brotherhood um, mechanic built in. Like, they all, they're all about helping each other out, just like they do in the show. Like, you know, we're brothers, we're going to work together, help each other out to get through this. And that's what they do, and they do it super well. So when it comes to Republic look and looking for swarms, look at ARC 170s. Yes, they're a little bit more expensive, but the payout is better because you're looking at more cohesion. You're getting some named pilots in there and some abilities that allow you to have great cohesion and great squad mechanics within yourself. So it's kind of similar to First Order, but whereas First Order, you're just getting vanilla ships 
with no abilities and you're playing them for the ships themselves, for the same price, you're getting named pilots with abilities that help your swarm out. So that's why I say that Republic is just a, is just that much better than First Order, but it feels so much better. Just that little bit of much makes their swarm so much stronger, so much more consistent. So if you're looking for a very named pilot swarm list, I would go with Galactic Republic. Next up, we have Resistance, and Resistance is actually going to be, in some cases, um, it teeters between Tier 1 and Tier 2. The reason why I say that is because they do have a Tier 1 swarm list. A-Wings are very powerful for the, for the Resistance. The Resistance is very good at using the A-Wings that have the guns turn around, um, being always off, being able to offer pressure at all times without having to do K-turns or flip around. So always being able to do the blue maneuver, turn the gun around after a focus, and then shoot still, then come back around, flip it forward the next turn, and just keep on doing that whole merry-go-round thing. That's very powerful, especially when you can get, you know, five named pilots, six named even. Um, you can go up to, I think you probably could go up to seven or eight A-Wings, um, but really you're always sitting at like six A-Wings. Now what makes them tier two is even though that list is tier one, those A-Wings are very tier one, the faction as a whole is tier two. You really can't swarm any other ship um, in, that, in that faction. Um, you cannot swarm the X-Wing too well uh, you cannot swarm really any of the uh, transports because most of them are named. And you can't swarm the bombers too well. And they have a lot of big ships. So you can swarm the bombers kind of, I guess, three. I think you fit three or four maybe in of the bombers. But when you really think about swarms, you're looking more at the A-Wings. But they are a tier one list. But as a faction, it is tier two just because you go for those A-Wings. Not only for aces, but also for swarming as well. Next up, we have the Empire, and the Empire is a high-end Tier 1. There is no secret about this that the Empire faction was the first Swarm faction. Um, the TIE Fighter Swarm was a big, popular thing in the very, 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 very first days of X-Wing itself. Of X-Wing 1.0 in 2012, it was basically Rebel Aces versus TIE Swarms. I think that was the first World Championship um, table for the finals. I think it was... Uh, Wedge, Luke, and Biggs versus a TIE Swarm. I think that was the list. And it was very powerful. And ever since then, like Empire has always had a very solid way of creating great swarms. There's the Admiral Sloan Aggressor list, which is a great swarm. There is the um, Commandant Gorin and Striker list that is on the loose right now in hyperspace format. Um, and not to mention that there's also the classic TIE Swarm, that you're able to put Howl Runner, Inferno Squad, and then whoever else you want as your six TIE Fighter, and those six TIE Fighters are just a moving fortress on the on the board. So Empire is so good at making swarms. They're so good at making generic swarms or making name swarms. They're just really good at it, and they're really easy to always put in with that ace. So if you want to do like Vader and then have like a TIE Swarm as, like it's, as his escort, you could totally do that super powerful Totally love the Empire for swarming because of that. Next up, we have the Scum and Villainy. And Scum and Villainy is going to be Tier 3. They do have a great swarm in the Mining Guild ties, basically ignoring obstacles, which I love a lot. Um, but you really don't see too many swarms of them pay off just because their ships are super, super fragile that they can swarm, like the Mining Guild ties, like the... Um, the, the, their interceptors, the M3s, um, the, little, the little bugs, like, they look like little beetles to me. Um, those ships are not necessarily... They're, they're good for swarming and getting the numbers, sure. But you're not getting a lot of value. They're really easy to hit and destroy. Um, and they most likely won't get off their abilities and such. So uh, Scum, usually when you play them, you're going for the control factor as opposed to the swarm factor. And most... People who play Scum usually agree with me saying like, yeah, I tried doing a Swarm list, but it ended up being like this Swarm that has control factors to it. So um, another good Scum list that's always fun to play that people do love uh, is Suicide Zs. So if you want to play like, basically just Z95s with Dead Man Switch, that's a great Scum Swarm list. So if you want to fly that one, that one's good. Um, go for that one. It's actually kind of similar, to, actually, if you want to go back up to uh, Resistance here, to the Fireball list. If you want to fly a Swarm of Fireballs, that's always good, but again, um, there's just outs to it. Um, but 
again, suicides, these are pretty, are pretty fun swarm lists, but it's not super competitive. It's just more or less a fun list. Uh, next up, we have the Rebellion. And the Rebellion is going to be mid-tier 2. reason why I say Rebellion is mid-tier 2 in terms of swarming is because their swarms are not necessarily as powerful, kind of uh, not really as powerful as they can be with terms of named pilots. Like, you can't put named pilots in a swarm. You can only really have um, generic pilots with lower initiative, very similar to First Order. You know, you're looking at lower initiative, generic pilots that aren't named. So with Rebellion, you usually see uh, five X-Wings as like their swarm list. Five is barely like the minimum to encounter a swarm. To me, if you have five or more ships, you are a swarm. If you have five or more, five is the minimum. If you have eight, that is a strong swarm. That is a swarm without any um, debate. Eight is a swarm. But because Rebellion's only really good at putting five good generic ships on the board, um, it's not as powerful as a swarm as you want. Now, you do get the three attack dice, but the whole point is to always being able to do like the, the two attack dice as many times as you can to help strip away tokens and such. Um, make your opponent always spend those resources on bad rolls for defense dice. Because remember, I said this in the Dick the Bulk the videos that the red dice have a better chance of naturally hitting than the green dice do of naturally evading. So, Rebellion, do you have cool combos? Sure, you could put four X-Wings in a list and then have an A-Wing with Tracers and then just use the A-Wing to set up the attack. That's cool, that's good, you can do that, but it's just it takes a lot more... Um, skill and you don't have as much resources to your advantage to use to get off the swarm mechanic so i do kind of stay away when i want to swarm away from the rebellion in that case but they do have some like again little nuggets of lists that are really good but they don't have anything that's superiorly tier one to me not like resistance and last up we have separatists and separatists are tier zero to me Reason why Separatists are tier zero to me is because the ships in the Separatist Alliance can do so much in using the rule of four, two, and eight for real military tactics in their swarms. Um, because the maximum number of ships you can have in X-Wing Matrix is eight. If you have four of them and you put like grappling struts on four, energy shells on the other four, and you basically use the ones of grappling struts to get on rocks to support the ones that are flying around with energy shells, that's super powerful to me. Being able to change the way your entire list functions and go, okay, I have a swarm coming at you. Okay, now we're gonna dogfight and I have lower initiative, but I have all this control. You have no idea what I'm gonna do or if I'm gonna leave this rock or do anything else. There's just a lot of wonderful things that Separatists offer in terms of swarming that not only give you great combos, but allow you to really use a lot of good skill to defeat your opponent that really catches them off guard whereas you know with imperial tie fighter swarms yes don't be in front of them that's like the number one rule of swarms don't be in front of them with separatists you kind of break that you end up on the rock and now you're on the side of them and you're still as much danger they have a really cool 360 coverage in a way with having eight ships and they're very maneuverable in certain ways not necessarily in the sense of a dial way but in a resource way, being able to land on stuff. So Separatists, definitely tier zero for me. Not only that, but the Nat, the Gene Ocean Starfighters are good. The Bombers are good. Um, the Droid Gunships are even good to swarm if you get really good at swarming them. Like, there's just always a good way to swarm cheap, efficient ships in the Separatist Alliance. So I do think they're tier zero for that. So again, just a quick rundown. Zero for Separatists. They're, I think they're the best. Empire is always my personal choice. I always go for Empire for Swarms. Galactic Republic using that Brotherhood mechanic, being able to help one another out. Resistance has a tier one swarm list, but as a faction, they're not really good at swarming. Re Rebellion, they do have very powerful, punchy swarm lists, but because they have a smaller number, they're really easier to manage. Uh, same thing with First Order. They have good ships that you could swarm, but they're all too expensive to really swarm them successfully. And then Scum and Villainy just have these really fun uh, swarm lists. They're just fun. They're not necessarily competitive t too much, but they are fun. Um, but if you're looking to swarm, you know, there's just better places that get the to get that um, swarm power out of other factions. So don't look too much at Scum and Villainy unless you want to have just... Fun, really crazy combos. Just again, be aware that it does get expensive playing swarm lists because you do have to 
buy the same ship over and over and over and over again um, to get that power. So thank you guys so much for watching. If this video helps you out, make sure you share it with a friend. Like this video and subscribe to the channel. This place crawls, and remember to always check your six.